Welcome to another edition of Entrepreneurs en Fuego. We are documenting the journey of artists, of entrepreneurs, digitally documenting the journey of artists and entrepreneurs here in the Valley. With me, I have the distinct pleasure and honor to have a world-renowned artist. This doesn't happen too often, you know? I mean, we don't get world-renowned. We get artists, but they're not world-renowned artists. So I have to include that when I introduce my dear friend, my new hero, Thank Catherine. You, yeah, I'm Catherine. Honored. Catherine Henry. In your presence. Thank oh my goodness gracious! Thank no, you. I. The, the pleasure is all mine. But we're going to talk a little bit about your art. What this show is all about is we talk about the journey, how you became an artist, and the journey that you had to go through. But tell us a little bit more about what you're doing now. What I'm doing is that I'm preparing for a show uh, here at the gallery at the office. Uh, pile and that's coming up January the 8th in the evening. It's on first Friday, which is going to be fabulous It's the first Friday of the new year yes. So I think it's going to be very exciting and good energy because everybody wants to make changes in the first of the year So I'm basically doing the show because I want other artists to come down here I was privileged to come yesterday, and I think this is amazing to have all this space It's the only kind of this um, complexity of this building and what you offer here in the United States so and also I artists that go I don't know what to do and I kind of snivel and I said oh no you call me we'll get you set up you'll have an art show here that's how simple it is you have the electricity the lights the parking and uh, it all works out and I think it's important that other artists know that they can come here here is the office pile at 2501 North 7th Street. Here is Phoenix. Here is the Attico Galleria. And here is Catherine Henneman. And you are absolutely beautiful. And let me tell you something. Your art is, is fascinating. It is incredibly good. It's abstract. Yes. And it's large. Yes, it is. I work in uh, the medium of oils and acrylic and texture paste and some secret sauces. Everybody always asks me, but I don't tell them so uh, and also the size can range from anything from small 16 by 20 to 8 feet 10 feet 12 feet I work with a lot of designers and architects uh, in California and Arizona and uh, around the world so what I'm known and known for is my commission work my one-of-a-kind paintings that nobody else has and that's what I, my expertise is so so if a big company or anybody wants to have uh, your artwork hung in their building, in their corporate headquarters, and they call you. Yes, they do. You can go to my website and you can view the work. Probably 85% of the work on the website is already sold. So a lot of people look at things and they like something. I go, I'm sorry, but I can do something similar. So um, the the way to get to uh, to review my work is to see the different variety and styles that I have on my website, which is kept current. And then this particular show in January, I'm going to be introducing something that I've never done before. So I feel really excited. So don't, 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 don't tell us the secret time sauce. Time. Don't tell us the secret yeah. because that's going to spoil the thing. But let, let me ask you this. I, I'm, so, I'm so intrigued about your art because, I mean, you've been an artist for, for a long, long time. In fact, in fact, since 1985. It's on Cinco de Mayo that you had your first that's exposition, correct. I think. In Los Angeles, California. And I was thrilled to do it. I sold 98% of my work that Sunday and I probably the next week laid on the bed looked at the ceiling because I was like oh my gosh what have I done so it was very exciting because I'm a self-taught artist so to do this it was a very big step for me to take and to acknowledge that I am an artist. Okay so how did you find out that you had talent? I mean were you kind of dancing around in the kitchen with paint and everything else and all of a sudden boom paints platters right on a canvas and you say, oh my goodness, I'm an artist. No, I think when I was growing up here in Phoenix, I had gone to, you know, grade school here and I used to do things for my family. I'm one of eight, six children and so I would make placemats and place settings and do things. So I was the artistic creative one out of the bunch. So uh, it probably wasn't until my late 20s that I really grasped the fact that I was an artist and that's when I decided to host my own show. Did, did somebody come to you and say, you have talent, or do you, did you realize, no. you know, I, I have something more special than, than, no. than everybody else? I think when people saw the work at the show in May of 1985, they, they had thought it was somebody else's work, because I worded the invitation that you're cordially invited to, uh, to view selected works of art by Catherine Henneman. They thought I went out and selected works. 
they didn't know it was mine. So that was kind of exciting. That's amazing. So, all right. So I, I want to go into inside your mind. And the oh, ins oh. <laughs> <laughs> is that a dangerous place to go? That's a good place. I love my all mind. All right. Okay. That's cool. Mind. But, but here's very the thing. Active. How how does the creative mind work? In other words, do you when do you get inspiration? Is there a specific time of the day that you get inspiration for these things, it or it, it, how how does it happen? It happens. I could look at a uh, a thimble of paint or a thread or a book, or I can hear poetry or see a movie. Inspiration is all around. It's, it's what you it's what you take in and process through you as an emotion. So I would say that 100% of my work is all emotional. It is. So, so let me let me ask you this this beautiful painting right here that we have. I mean, we we'll, we're going to throw out some B roll so that okay. people can appreciate what we have over here. But this one, how long did it take to do this one, in particular? Well, if I'm on a roll and I don't like to stop, I I get up at four. Yeah. I work, 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 and then usually my cutoff time is about three or four o'clock because I'm pretty tired, and then I'll start the next day. So this was probably a couple weeks in process to get it to be the way I want it to be. And how do you know that you're done? Um, there's a timing. There's an inner timing when you know something is done. The last splash, the last, the last brush stroke, the, the last little nuance that you want in there. And rarely do I ever change the painting. Once it's set, it's set. I don't go back over it and rework it. Have you ever had, though, that instance where you go back into your early painting, say, and you look at it and you go, Mm, where is a brush? I can. I think that this one needs a little bit of help. No, I, I appreciate them for the, for that particular time that I created it that month that year. That was that's who I was at that time. So the, my work, you know, reflects where I'm at at that moment. So it's recorded in the painting. So I can look at it and appreciate it. I don't go back and change it. Your, your style is abstract. Abstract expressionistic is what they call it. Correct. Yeah. And so it's very personal because what you are seeing through your eyes could certainly be interpreted by somebody else as something much different or the message that you originally intended could be much different than what the beholder. Correct. A lot is of looking. Times people see uh, things in my work, they'll say, oh, I see a horse, or I'll see a bunny, or I'll see a tree, and I, wanna, I always think to myself, personally inside, I say, well, that's very nice, but that's not in there. <laughs> but it's because my work is emotional. But if somebody sees something in it that they relate to, I am happy that they see that. But, but emotions are abstract in a sense, aren't they? I mean, whatever I feel um, about love, or about hate, or about... Uh, any other emotion, it's very personal, correct? Mm -hmm. And so, so your paintings, when somebody looks at your paintings, that is a very personal experience. Yes, it is. I think it's, for me, it's like giving them a gift of who I am, because a lot of times I don't get to meet the people that I've created the work for, and my work is shipped from me, and I'll never see the, the residence or the office building where it's hanging, but I feel a part of me goes out. My emotions are in this. Are, are there paintings where you felt pain and and joy and and just kind of a mixtures of emotions every that single that you day. every single day you know there's pain and agony and terror and fright and joy and happiness it's all in here and but do I rare do I paint when I'm happy probably not I paint because it's it's what I do I don't I'm not like yippee skippy and oh this is oh I'm gonna paint today no no it's because I have to get it out of me and onto the canvas. We've, um, we've interviewed several artists here at the office pile here at the Galleria. And believe it or not, that is a common thread. They're painting because of fear, because there's something inside of them mm -hmm. that needs to get out, mm -hmm. that needs to get out, and, and you have to do it. Yes, that's true. I think it's a, it's, um, it's a way uh, to honor the gift that we're given. I mean, this is a gift. And if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. So artists that are out so, there. Wait a minute. Somebody told me that about something <laughs> else, though. And if I didn't, but that's a different story. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like if you've got, to, you, you've got to use your gift, you know, if you're talented. That's what they keep telling me. I've got to use my gift. And, I, you know, just not using it enough, I guess. Use your gift. 
about you've got your office pile here to and bring people in and for them to share their gifts with you. You're a remarkable man to be able to put this together for the city of Phoenix. It's a great, great venue. You're amazing. And, and let me tell you something. We are very, very proud. You, we're going to have this exposition on January the 8th, right. 2016. And we certainly encourage the community to come in and yes. check out your art. Because it's uh, in the abstract, really, you can see the emotions of the painter, mm -hmm. your emotions. Yes. But I can also see a lot of my own emotions reflected nice. in your art. Okay. And I think that experience, it's very, very, very important to, to have. And, and it's, it is actually very unique. And you can build on it. You know, emotions, uh, they travel, they grow, they change, just like everybody does on a daily basis. A lot of times we, we have no control what's going on in the outside world. Sometimes we don't want to know what's going on out there. But at least this way I can create something that I feel good about and I can share and give back to the world. You're Go, go ahead. And how they perceive it is is how I want them to be. Is your let me let me take it just a while, I guess. Okay. One of your favorite painters has got to be Pollock. Jackson Pollock, I like. I love Sonia Dulaney. I love Richard Diebenkorn. Um, you know, there's there's many artists that I really really enjoy. Be, because there's agony in their in their art yeah. as well. Right. Yeah. There's agony. Yeah. <laughs> You are amazing, it, it, because because you're so amazing. I'm gonna give you a little oh gift. Oh my gosh! How look about this. that? Yeah, oh my well, gosh! Well, hold, this, hold this. Let's hold this up. This oh, is this, this is a nice T-shirt. Oh, this is beautiful. Yeah, this is a nice T-shirt. I'm gotta, not gonna get any paint on this. No, 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 I mean, no you're no, definitely I, not gonna get any no, paint on that. I mean, this is my dressy T-shirt. <laughs> Thank he, you very much. You're gonna you're gonna have to send me a picture when you wear this Peace thing. Peace and salt. That's yeah. yep. And simplicity. But, what a great T-shirt. Yeah. Is. And here here is the 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 virtues that this T-shirt have. In fact, our entrepreneurs have these virtues, and it says simplicity, discipline, humility, kindness, and honesty. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it says it all. Thank you so much. I'm so looking forward to January 8th. This is a great way to start the, the new year. And so I look forward to everybody coming down and, and visiting us. It's first Friday, so you're just going to go a little farther north. Come and see us. We're going to have delicious food. You know, the, you know the only problem between you and me? What's that? You're, you're too young for me. <laughs> and, <laughs> and with that, stop flirting with me. And with that... <laughs> With that, we're out. <laughs>